Oh, I totally forgot. I need to buy a cleanser. Um, do you mind if I quickly jump into the drugstore? I'm happy to help you buying a cleanser. Mmm, this sounds reasonable. I mean, it's cheap. It looks decent. I'll get this. Wait, wait, wait. You don't want to just buy products. You have to analyze and research all the ingredients so that you make sure you're not applying anything toxic. So yeah, let me just do it for you. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Wow, it has four allergens with seven red flag ingredients according to the EWG rating. So no, honey, you're gonna get cancer. Oh, okay. Um, what about this? This looks good. Let's see. Um, Nope, it has silicone. You don't want to wrap your face with a silicone because it's going to stop your skin from breathing, so no. You know what? I think I do. I want to suffocate all my pores and yeah, I'm gonna get this. It's become a default for a lot of us to look up skincare ingredients before we make any purchase through apps or useful websites. While it's a good thing for us as a consumer to get more educated and more informed about what we're topically applying, the flip side of it is that there are much confusing and misleading information out there that are rather too over-exaggerated or too misleading. And a lot of these nonprofit groups out there who are developing all the grading system for individual skincare ingredients out there, they have been too scaremonger and fearmonger us to steer away from any kind of toxic or just chemical looking ingredients. So today I'm bringing some ingredients that really don't deserve this unfair bad reputation. Let's start off by talking about silicones. You can identify silicones on a product label um, by finding the ingredient that ends with cone, canole, or siloxan. Silicones got a really bad reputation over time for no reason it's, and I came across a lot of articles saying that by applying silicone in your face you're suffocating your skin, you're literally wrapping your face with a plastic wrap and also it's going to clog your pores and it's going to aggravate the acne which is completely False. Silicone plays a numerous versatile roles when it comes to cosmetic formulation. So first off, in skincare products, it acts as a slight occlusive. So it retains the hydration so that your skin stays moisturized and well hydrated throughout the entire day without your skin giving up water to the air. It also has a superior spreadability which allows the formulation to be very very elegant and pleasant giving you that amazing silkiness. When silicones are present in makeup products it's mostly there to give a very nice slip and pore smoothening or fine line smoothening effect. Regarding its safety and controversy, what I can say is that silicones have been around for ages, for over decades without a concern or any conclusive scientific data to show that silicones are harmful, dangerous, or toxic to apply on the skin. In fact, it's the way opposite. Silicones are known to be very skin friendly more than any botanical oils or botanical waxes that you can see in a lot of natural organic products. And that's because it creates a very breathable formula. So it sits on top of your skin and never suffocates the skin. So it's non-pore clogging, non-comedogenic, and also it's hyperallergenic. And because a lot of people can tolerate silicone very, very well, it's widely used in medical fields too. So if you were to get a boobs job, they will implant silicones. And the contacts that you wear daily, they're made of silicone. And it's not like your contact lenses are just suffocating and wrapping your entire eyes to not breathe or not communicate with the world. It actually feels very comfortable and just feels breathable. Next, we have petrolatum, aka petroleum jelly, which is the famous base for Vaseline. And in fact, one of my favorite body lotions of all time contains petrolatum, and that is the reason why I love this product. It just keeps your body moisturized without giving that really greasy or butteriness to it. Petrolatum got a lot of hate because environmental working group warns a lot of people to steer away from petrolatum because it contains a cancer causing chemical called PAH which is true in industrial grade of petrolatum however what we're using in cosmetics are highly refined highly purified that contains probably low to even none of the PAH and skincare chemists out there they're not here to cause us cancer and up to this date there is no scientific evidence showing that vaseline or petroleum jelly cause any cancer. Does petrolatum cause acne or does it clog the pore? So the answer is a little bit tricky here because petrolatum itself is proven to be non-comedogenic or it doesn't cause any allergies. However, since it has the ability to trap water-based ingredients that are mixed or that are used in conjunction with, if you're allergic or if you're sensitive, if your skin is prone to acne with any kind of ingredients that are mixed with petrolatum, it may give you more chance 
hands to breaking out or causing irritation. So it's not because of the petrolatum itself, but it is the mixture of the ingredients that yeah, you might be using. Next we have urea. I came across a lot of product claiming that it's a urea free formula and I was like so confused because I know urea is like an amazing humectant that actually is an essential component of natural moisturizing factor which means our body or skin naturally possess and produces that ingredient to keep our skin hydrated. So the idea of applying urea topically seems like a wonderful idea to solve dehydrated skin. But soon I found out there's confusion between the humectant urea and the preservative urea and I'm not going to even try to pronounce it because it sounds really ridiculous and I think the concern around these two preservatives stems from the fact that it releases formaldehyde which is a known carcinogen so I guess it's not a bad idea to possibly avoid these two preservatives however the urea itself is a very wonderful humectant so I just wanted to clear out the confusion out there with the next two ingredients, my friend here on YouTube called That Muffin Beauty Science. She's going to join me to talk more about the chemical UV filters and also parabens. Chemical sunscreens, more correctly known as organic sunscreens, have a bad reputation for being irritating and causing allergies. While this is still true for older ingredients like oxybenzone, Newer sunscreen ingredients are very good for sensitive skin. Some older organic sunscreens would also break down after absorbing too much UV light. Newer organic sunscreens like Tinosorb S and M are too large to get into the skin and don't break down with UV. Organic sunscreens are also capable of protecting you more from UVA light. Parabens are very common preservatives that have been used for many years in many, many products. They're popular because they're very effective even when only very small amounts are used. A study published in 2004 found parabens in breast tumor tissue. This got a lot of attention even though there were big problems with the study. For example, they didn't look at normal breast tissue to see if there were parabens there too. And blank samples, which didn't contain any breast tissue at all, also had parabens in them. Since then, there haven't been any studies that have found a link between the levels of parabens normally used in personal care products and negative health effects. A recent study found that higher levels of parabens in blood was correlated with worse sperm quality, but this is very far from a solid link. Parabens are still the most effective preservatives available, with the least irritant and allergic reactions. Replacement preservatives haven't been used for as long, so their health effects are less well known. Unpreserved products can lead to dangerous infections. There isn't any good reason to go out of your way to avoid parabens. I feel like there are so many fear-mongering and scare-mongering marketing and over-exaggerated claims out there, and even saying that everything that we apply topically is going to penetrate into the bloodstream up to like 60% of it, which is very far from the truth because our skin is in fact very resilient and very resistant in keeping everything out and not letting external substance into our body, which makes it really, really hard for a lot of anti-aging creams to work because it's actually not penetrating inside the skin where it needs to work. So a lot of chemists and researchers work really, really hard to how to penetrate this active ingredient deeper and deeper. Deeper. and that's based on the fact that our skin is so resistant if you know for a fact that one of these ingredients cause you irritation or it clogs the pores that's great like you identify one by one and, and our skin is so subjective anyway so I can't really say there is a good ingredient or a bad ingredient I think it's a matter of fact there's an ingredient that suits my skin type my skin condition yeah it's very very personal but let's not really say that these ingredients are toxic please share this video with your friends and family who vigorously look into all those apps and you know analyzing websites because sometimes it can be a little bit too overwhelming and too stressful and all you want to do is goddamn enjoy your skincare without any kind of stress out there because stress is like the number one skin enemy anyways so why don't we just chill out and relax a little bit and indulge into our skincare you're more than welcome to join our pom pom fam by hitting that subscribe button down below that will mean so much to me and yeah until we see each other stay healthy and eat a lot of veggies and i'll see you guys soon bye